Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Lima-sans from Polar Functions in Calc 2. So first of all, this is not important, but the word Lima-sans, that little tail on the C, is known as a cedilla, or in French, a cedi. But that tail basically means you want to pronounce it as the soft C, which is why it's a Lima-san and not a Lima-con. Again, that doesn't matter that much at all. What matters is the formula. All Lima-sans basically have the formula R equals A plus or minus B cosine theta. The R stands for radius, which hopefully you already know how to graph other polar functions or else this is probably not the best video to start with. A and B are constants. The plus or minus is because it can be positive or negative. And cosine theta can also be replaced with sine theta, in other words, you could also have this function as well. And let me show you how to graph these limasons. So first, I'll start with the function r equals 2 plus 4 cosine theta. If you want to graph this in polar coordinates, then recommend making a table for theta and r. And I'll choose the values 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Technically, you can go crazy. You can do the entire unit circle if you want, but I'm just going to do these values. So when I plug in 0 in for theta, it's the cosine of 0, which is positive 1, times 4 plus 2 will get a radius of 6. Now what that looks like on my polar graph is at the angle 0, I need to go 6 tick marks to the right, and I'll have this coordinate point right there. And then for pi over 4, Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2 times 4 is 2 root 2. So then finally I'll get a radius of 2 plus 2 root 2, which if you don't know is approximately 4.8. And so that means at a 45 degree angle or pi over 4 radians, I need to go about 4.8 tick marks in this direction. So I'll do my best. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4.8 would be about there. Again, I am assuming you know how to plot polar functions. If not, check out my video on that. Then at pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and 2 plus 0 is 2. So at pi over 2, just two tick marks up, and that'll be right there. At pi, we're going to have a negative radius, negative 2. So if the angle pi is supposed to go to the left, 2, a negative radius means it's going to go to the right, 2. So I have a point right there. At 3 pi over 2 is 2. So at the angle 3 pi over 2, we need two tick marks down. So we'll get that point right there. And last, at 2 pi, it's the same as 0. We will get 6. And now I know I didn't do all the points, but if I were to do all the points, you would see that the graph would connect like this. First it goes around like a circle, and then it does something funky here. It's going to hit the origin, go loop around, hit the negative 2, go back through the origin, hit that point there, and then finally connect back to the beginning. Thus creating the inner loop Limasan, famous for having the loop in the middle right there. And just so you know, you are going to have the inner loop Limasan whenever B is greater than A. In other words, whenever the part next to the sine or cosine is bigger, then the other constant, that's when you get an inner loop. Now, there are three other cases of limasons to talk about, which I will, but the one thing I want you to know, in general, I can change the way the limason points up, down, left, or right, depending on if the sine or the cosine is positive or negative. So for instance, when I have a positive cosine, like one plus two cosine theta, that is gonna be the case we just had, where the bigger loop points to the right, like this. And by the way, the positive one here doesn't matter. That could have been negative one plus two cosine theta. It's the same graph, weirdly enough. All that matters is the thing in front of the cosine. And then if I want to point left, then I just need to do negative cosine. And that's gonna be a limason that looks like this, with the bigger loop pointing to the left. And then if you want it to point up or down, that's where the signs come in. So. That would be an example like this with a positive sign is going to point up. And then last, obviously, if I want it to point down, then I just have to do a negative sign and that would look 
like this. So again, all of these are the inner loop scenario. We have three more cases to talk about. The next one is going to be the cardioid family. You get cardioids whenever the A is equal to the B, ignoring the plus or minus. So maybe you want to put absolute value signs around this. I don't care. But what I'm saying is if you have three plus three sine theta or negative four plus four cosine theta, as long as the A equals the B in value, and you're gonna get the cardioid. Now, what does the cardioid look like? I'll just tell you, I'm not even gonna make the table of values this time. If you have a positive cosine, it's gonna to point to the right, and it is going to look like this, so that it kinda of just barely touches the origin. And some people say it kinda of looks like a heart, especially if you have the negative sine version, because that would point down and you'd get something that looks like this. I'm not the greatest artist in the world, but you can graph it on your calculator, you can graph it online, and you can see what it actually looks like. Then the third case we can have, this is known as the dimpled limason, and this is when A is greater than B, but we don't want it to be greater than 2B, so we're gonna stick it in between B and 2B. So for instance, this would be examples like 3 plus 2 sine theta, that'd be good. But 5 plus 2 sine theta would not be a good example because now we're bigger than 2b, or b is 2. And again, the pluses and the minuses don't matter, just determines which way this dimpled limason will point. So if I did want to graph 3 plus 2 sine theta, first I know it points upwards because it's positive sine theta, and the dimpled limason looks something like this. You'll notice it's like the cardioid because it dips in a little bit, but it never actually gets back to the origin, and for that reason we call it the dimpled limason. And then the last case we can have is when A is greater than 2B, so for instance 5 plus 2 sine theta from earlier. Now as far as I know, this is still called a dimpled limason, but it doesn't look the same. Like, let me show you. It would look kind of like an oblique circle, or like an oval, where it never actually caves in, but it's definitely flatter on that side of the circle. I know it looks like mine's caving in a little bit. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be just about perfectly flat on the bottom and perfectly curvy on the top part. And it is supposed to be more oriented upwards. So maybe it looks something more like this, where if we're doing the five plus two sine theta, the part at the top should be seven units long, and the part going to the bottom should be three units long, reason being five plus two, seven, the maximum, five minus two, three, the minimum. So you should get something that looks like this. And then that's basically it for limasons. Two last things I wanna say. The domain for these functions, well, maybe domain's the wrong word, but I'm gonna say the domain for this function is zero to two pi, non-inclusive, in other words, if you want to graph a whole limason, you need 0 to 2 pi. And the reason why that's significant is because the domain for other polar functions, like for instance sine theta, that's just 0 to pi. And that's handy to know when you're looking for the area. Like for instance, if I wanted the area of this whole dimpled limason, I'm not going to talk too much about area in this video. I talk about it more in another video. But if this is the formula, 1 half, integral from theta one to theta two of r squared d theta. The theta one and theta two, if you want the whole limason, would be zero to two pi. And then just one last thing to think about, if I give you the inner loop, for instance, like we had earlier today, and they want you to find the area of just the inner loop, then you're gonna need to find the intersection points of that inner loop. How do we do that? All you need to do is set the radius equal to zero, so like, for instance, if I have r equals one plus two cosine theta, I would just set that equal to zero and solve this because I would subtract one from both sides, two cosine theta equals negative one, divide both sides by two, so that cosine theta equals negative one half. And I have to think to myself, what values of theta get me negative one half? I know it's gonna be in quadrants two and three because of the unit circle. And it turns out it's going to be two angles it's gonna be two pi over three, which is in quadrant two, and four pi over three, which is in quadrant three. 
And these would be the two angles I would be looking at if I wanted to set up an equation for the area. It would look something like this. But again, the focus is not on area. It's just on limassons and how to graph them and the four different types of limassons. So that's really it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.